Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless, beloved saints. Uh, I am so happy that you guys uh, are watching this message. It really uh, brings me great joy to my heart. Today's message is called Cain and Abel and us, meaning me and you, beloved brother and sister. Uh, I would like to start with a prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite you, Father, that you may give me utterance to the Holy Spirit, that those who you want to see this message will see this message, that the seed may go forth, that one may water, one planteth, that you may give increase, Lord, that this may be used, Father, to edify and perfect your church, Father, including myself. And we praise and exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God, for all the days that you have given us and all the days that you will give us. And thank you, Father, that we are in your beloved Son, the Lord Christ. We await for his coming. Thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, uh, beloved brother and sister, we're going to start uh, talking and we're going to hit today the book of Jasher. Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be talking about Cain and Abel and us. Why us? Because I'm included in this. Because God is not a respecter of persons. God is a just God. And God wishes and take no pleasure that any should perish. He wants all people to come to the knowledge of his beloved son. And being realistically, a lot of people are rejecting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, this saddens the Lord, as we know. Imagine, it saddens you. Imagine how much it saddens the Lord when someone rejects the beautiful gift that he has given us, his only begotten son. So, today we're going to be talking, we're going to hit the surface uh, concerning Cain and Abel and us meaning me and you, all right? Uh, the book of Jasher in the Holy Bible, it makes reference to the book of Jasher in 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 18 and in Joshua chapter 10 and verse 13. Uh, and it makes reference that there's more things written in the book of Jasher. Uh, usually when the Lord wants us to look further into a matter, or if something is good or bad, it makes reference to it in the Bible. And the Bible is actually making a good reference here to the book of Jasher. We're going to go into Jasher chapter 1. And uh, chapter 1, if you have it, that's great. If not, I have it up on the screen. Uh, you can pause your screen. That way you can read it. Let me see if I can uh, move this. That way you can see it better. Now you can read it, pause it, and then follow along with me, and uh, hopefully it'll be an edifying message for you. I'm going to start at verse 14, book of Jasher, chapter 1, verse 14, in Jesus' name. And the boys, in this case is referring to Cain and Abel. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land, and Cain was a tiller of the ground and Abel a keeper of sheep. Verse 15, in Jesus' name. And it was at the expiration of a few years that they bought an approximating offering to the Lord. And Cain bought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel bought from the firstlings of his flock, from the fat thereof. And God turned and inclined to Abel and his offering. And a fire came down from the Lord from heaven and consumed it. Wow. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Verse 16. And unto Cain and his offering, the Lord did not turn, and he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel. On account of this, he sought a pretext to slay him. Wow. All right. Okay. Verse 17. 
okay whoa so now we're gonna we have the word and we have the foundation so we see here how is very prophetic because Abel was a shepherd he had sheep he tended to the animals how prophetic is that Abel took care of the sheep while Cain took care of the ground so both of them brought an offering before the Lord but the Lord did not consume both offerings he only consumed one and the scripture says that he was pretty much pleased with Abel's offering why was he pleased because Abel took the first he took the first link he took the best to the Most High God and guess what Cain did Cain came with an offering and he gave God the inferior inferior means the least the things with blemishes he gave him pretty much the leftovers whatever he didn't care for he gave that to God can you can you imagine that just think about that right as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ we're like wow how dare he how, how can someone come and give God Almighty leftovers think about that while Abel gave God his best and God answered fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering of Abel which at the end of the day Cain saw that as an excuse as a pretext to guess what to slay his brother that means he wanted to kill him so we saw how that pretty much brought anger and brought envy jealousy because his offering was not consumed now we see here can you imagine two people put yourself in this scenario someone brings leftover and now they're feeling bad because God accepted your offering did they really expect that God did not did he really expect that God did not know that he was giving God his leftover right I'm gonna reread that part again and verse 16 says unto Cain and his offering the Lord did not turn and he did not incline unto it for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord and Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on the count of this he sought a pretext to what to slay him meaning to kill him so beloved brother and sister now we're gonna talk about me and you because you see it seems very wicked what Cain did he gave God the leftovers and Abel gave God his best so now we're gonna be talking about us right I want you guys to think about it what is what are some of the most valuable things what is the most valuable thing that we have what, what what would be considered one of the most valuable things that we have I could tell you straight up ourselves the what what we most value that we have is ourselves right and think about what we do and how we invest or spend our time right think about this this right here I have a picture that right there we is very valuable our time our time brother and sister is very very valuable because guess what once it's gone we don't get it back it is extremely valuable as a matter of fact your jobs they pay you for you to labor and they pay you basically for your time they're paying you for your time right so think about this how much time do you spend with the Lord now I want you to think about Cain and Abel Abel gave God his best offering right Cain gave him the leftovers now concerning your time brother and sister us we having a straight talk right us 
are we giving God our leftover time? That's very sad because in that situation, how can we judge Cain when we're giving God the leftovers? See, some people, right? How much time did you spend praying? Did you pray at all? Did you read the word? Did you praise and worship? Oh, I had to work. I had to take care of business. God knows I had to take care of my kids. God knows I had to take care of the bills. Yeah, there's a lot of things that have to get taken care of. But at the end of the day, is that giving God your best? Or are you giving him what remains? Are you giving him the leftovers? Are you giving him the inferior part of you? Look at that clock. The clock is ticking. And I actually have an app that I loaded. And here when I click on it, you see that time is passing by. And guess what? Time doesn't come back. And the Bible says to every man, right? It's a point to the time. And guess what? Once that person dies, the judgment, the person doesn't get that time back. And God is going to say, what did you spend your time doing at the end of the day? Because the time is very valuable. Guess what? We do have an altar now. Because Cain and Abel, they did place their offering on an altar that they built, right? Our altar, our new altar is guess where? Right here. Our altar is our heart. So when we place our heart on the altar and we give God, look right there, look on the screen, our time. Think about that. I'm going to stop this for a second because, look, time is ticking. And I actually have, like, another app where it's um, it's one of those time that, that winds down and then it's bing, it clicks bing once the time is done. And that made me think how there's a, there's a time of death appointed onto man. And after that is the judgment. You have a time set. We don't know when our time to go is. Once that time is accomplished, did you give God your best? Or were we like Cain? And I'm going to tell you something so that we don't fool ourselves, so that we can, we, can, we can talk straight right here, right? Did we give God our best concerning time? Ask yourself, because a lot of people have strongholds. And by strongholds, there's an excuse to do things that are not cool, things that are wicked. And they have that excuse in their mind. And at the end of the day, the word of God is powerful and mighty to the taking down and pulling down of strongholds. So since you don't have this time, let me put a picture up of the, this clock right here. <laughs> Actually, there we go, but it's, uh, it's, it's not coming up, but you guys get the point. Let me, since you don't have the time, right? You don't have time. How much time do you spend? On Facebook hopefully you don't have one but if you do do you have TikTok? as a matter of fact the cell phone how there's actually settings in here that will let you know how much time you spent in a day in a week and very interesting how much time do you spend doing these things right right? Think about that. Watching TV, being with people who don't even want to be around you, being with people that are worldly, having conversations that profit no one because they're not of the kingdom. So at the end of the day, right? Here we are, you and I judging Cain. Hey, you're taking the inferior. And guess what? Is it possible that our phones get more time with us because I could tell you this much sometimes people even in the restroom they took their phones to the restroom to be on Facebook and like and dislike and who like this and who like that and not only Facebook there's multiple apps there's Instagram there's plenty of other things right so I want you guys to think about that right 
because we could put those things down and give God our best and be similar to Abel, right? Give him the best, which is what he wants. He knows what's in our heart. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes we're on our phones doing things for ministry, um, giving somebody advice. Sometimes we are reading a scripture. Sometimes we're listening to a sermon. That's fine. However, all these other things that are not profitable, why not give God our best? And there's a beautiful thing that the phone has. You can either turn it off or you have airplay mode. So break down your time. We don't we don't we don't encourage um, religion and to have a religious spirit is horrendous. So to say so for someone to say at five o'clock, five o'clock sharp, I always pray. I have to pray. I have to come on. Listen, here's the solution, right? The solution is to invite God and have God and be mindful of our Lord Jesus Christ all the time. The Bible says pray without ceasing, right? So you're at work. You're about to go on a lunch break. Can't you say, you know what? I'm going to turn off my phone. I'm not going to have anything work related. And this time while I'm at work today, this hour, these 45 minutes, this 20 minutes, this 15 minute break. I'm going to give it straight up to God and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray concerning other people because Christ cared about other people. So I'm going to pray about other people, right? Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab my paper Bible during that hour and I'm going to read the word. You see? Or writing or even driving to work. I'm going to put my phone on airplane mode and I'm not going to be interrupted because that's when the calls come in. And guess what? I'm going to praise and worship nonstop my whole ride to work. And I'm going to be speaking to the Lord. I'm going to be exalting the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what? At the end of the day, this is how we give God our best. Not just one hour, not just a few seconds, not just 10 minutes in a day, but all the time, every day. You see, because we have a new covenant with the Most High God. And our sacrifices, as you know, we no longer slaughter lambs. We don't kill cows, right? We don't kill sheep. We don't burn uh, all these things that they used to do in the past. Because guess what? Our sacrifices now are spiritual. They are with what we do and what we think and what we have in our heart at the end of the day. That's what really matters. So guess what? Placing other things before God also is idolatry. Having a phone and spending more time with the phone is idol worship. And the Lord knows this. There's only so much things we could do. And at the end of the day, if it's not for the kingdom, guess what? It's idol. It's idol worship. I wanted to show you guys a scripture. Blessed is the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And it's in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 16. And it says, Redeem redeeming the time because the days are evil and it is its own scripture redeeming the time because the days are evil who is the only one that can redeem how do we redeem this time i'll tell you how praising and worshiping reading the word really following the messiah and not only that but ministering to people spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, letting people know what he did and reminding them of what he did and answering questions in a biblical sense, like what would Jesus say or do in this situation that the person may come to the knowledge of him and say, you know what? That makes a lot of logic. Let me do just that. And that they will recognize that advice as godly advice and they will seek more of the Lord Jesus Christ because in all actuality, it is Christ. So I'm going to read the verses before so we could get the proper context. Uh, book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13 says, But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awakest thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And then shall ye walk circumspectly, not as a fool, but as wise, 
redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, whereas is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And that's a capital S. Be filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Guess where? Singing and making melody in your heart, which is the altar where we take everything. We take ourselves and we take our valuable, valuable time. Our time. There we go, which is very valuable. So we redeem the time. The days are wicked. There's only one way to do it. Worshipping and honoring the Most High God. I tell you guys, sometimes it's easy to judge another person. To say, hey, Cain only gave God what the inferior things. But what are we doing? Think about that. And for those of you that are married in a covenant with your significant other, remember, the man, the man is the head of the woman. And the head of the man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God Almighty. So now think about this. The man is the head who is out providing. He comes home and all he gets is the leftover. Hmm. The provider of all things. Isn't the provider of all things the earth and the fullness thereof of God? So shouldn't Cain have given him the, his best? You have a man that's out making bread to supply the home, the shelter, and everything. And when he comes home, all he gets is the leftover. Oh, yeah, and that favorite piece of uh, breast that you like? It's eaten already. We only left you a little wing. Instead of, you know what? We're so appreciative that you provide for this household. We made this dinner just for you. That's a big difference. You see, it shows honor and it shows appreciation. So we should be the same way to the most high God, shouldn't we? Show honor, show appreciation and give him our best, which at the end of the day, here we go. Our best is time. Let's give him our time. Spend time with the Lord. Spend time with him all the time. When you wake up, before you go to sleep, even in the middle of the day, all the time, may we be mindful of him. The Bible says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will direct your path. Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you guys. Acknowledge him in all your ways, in all his ways, that he will direct our path. That is my prayer for you guys. I love you guys very much. God bless.